All right, this topic 5.7 is all about urban air pollution. This is the pollution that is around us in the troposphere. And the aim of this PowerPoint and any other activities you do as part of this objective is to be able to explain the factors that affect levels of photochemical smog in a city. Okay? There's two objectives. First of all, we have to outline how ground level ozone is formed. And secondly, outline the formation of photochemical smog. And the main component of photochemical smog is ozone. So first, we'll understand how ozone is formed at the ground level. And then we'll look at photochemical smog in a little bit more detail. Now, remember that ozone has been discussed because it occurs in our stratosphere. And up there, it's protecting us from the UV light that would otherwise be coming in and uh, causing skin cancer, causing DNA degradation, impacting our wildlife, our coral reefs. Um, as it is, the ozone layer has been recovering, and so um, we're not experiencing as many problems. But we have this ozone at the ground level, and it's not good to be breathing it in, even if it's good as a protectant against UV light. So how is ozone formed at the ground level? Nobody is putting ozone into the air. Okay, it is a secondary pollutant. Remember, primary pollutants are emitted directly from their source, from a factory, from a car. But secondary pollutants react with other chemicals in the air to form something that's harmful. So how is ground level ozone formed? It's formed from two ingredients, two primary pollutants. Volatile organic compounds, which are the things you can smell because they're volatile, they're turning from a liquid into a gas. So they're petrol, they are from industry, from where they're using all kinds of solvents, and from you can see the paint can there, that strong chemical smell you can um, sense around those things. All right, the other one is nitrogen oxide, such as nitrogen dioxide, and this is being emitted also from industry and from vehicles and burning fossil fuels, but also in small powered appliances like lawn mowers, snow blowers, and leaf blowers. So when these two chemicals, these two um, ingredients combine, they will make ozone in the presence of sunlight. So let's see how that happens. Okay, so um, we tend to find ozone in hotter cities because we need sunlight for the noxes and voxes to react. All right, so here's our voxes floating around in the air. And here come our noxes. So we've got both ingredients we need. In the night time then, the noxes and voxes can't react. There's not enough energy for them to be able to form ozone. However, we turn the sunlight on and we get ozone. So you can go back and play with this if you wish. Now, I said that the ozone is the main component of photochemical smog. So, ozone formed from voxes and noxes reacting in sunlight. Photochemical smog, therefore, mostly made of voxes and noxes. But also, we have nitrogen and hydrogen. In those hot engines of the car, you are going to get nitrogen oxide produced, and it will react with hydrogen. We also have nitrogen oxide and oxygen produced. So the nitrogen oxide that has been formed in the car engine in the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen can now react with oxygen and form nitrogen dioxide. And this is a brownish, yellowish smoke that's quite typical when we think about um, smog. Now that nitrogen dioxide can react with water vapor, and you've seen this reaction before because it's nitric acid, which is a component of acid rain. 
nitrogen dioxide in sunlight will then split into nitrogen oxide and oxides. So there, that same reaction with the UV's energy is splitting that chemical, and you're left with a single oxygen unit, and it doesn't like to stay single. It's going to react with other oxygens and form O3. It would rather be an O3 than be a single O, and there we're getting ozone. Okay, so all of those chemicals are all part of the photochemical smog, plus other things as well. Um, over a hundred different pollutants, and also we've got particulate matter like grey and black stuff that's going. When you've been out in the pollution in Bangkok, you might have noticed if it's really bad. Sometimes the stuff in your nose is black. It's so bad. That's your particulate matter. You're not going to notice ozone in your nose. It's a very very small gas. Okay, so how much the photochemical smog impacts a city is going to depend on well, how dense the population is, and in Bangkok it's pretty dense, how much fuel we use, or how reliant we are on our fossil fuels, and in Bangkok we have very bad traffic. Um, climate, we have a lot of sunshine, but also topography, and the topography of Bangkok doesn't lend itself to high smog. So our smog actually isn't as bad as it would otherwise be. It's not as bad as, for example, in Los Angeles. And I'll explain that to you now. So in the picture on the left here, this is an A, and this is very similar to what we'd find in Bangkok. Lots and lots of traffic, so we're getting lots of ozone formed. But we've got warm air down here by the ground, warm air being radiated off the ground, um, and then as the air rises, it's cooling. Okay, so as we go up towards the outside of the troposphere, the air gets cooler and cooler. So in this situation, the ozone can just be moved off. You've got some air blowing through. Um, there's nothing trapping the ozone. But if you look in picture two, we actually have this warm inversion layer. Okay, so this is a warm layer of air. And this cold air down here by the ground is where all the ozone is. Well, why have you got cold air below hot air? It's in particular situations like being very close to a cold ocean, which Los Angeles is very close to a cold ocean. The Pacific Ocean in that region is very cold. So the cold air from the ocean comes on land and that kind of like heavy, dense air is weighing down and staying down near the ground, whereas the air up above it is warm. And because cold air particles don't move very much, they are going to stay there with the ozone in them and not get moved out. And that's when the ozone can become very, very bad. Okay, I mentioned particulate matter. This is another component of smog. And here we get some really nasty chemicals that can cause severe diseases like mercury um, and, uh, and a variety of suspended particles, which we call aerosols. So this is also a component, but a larger component of, um, of smog. And mostly we call this gray smog. And this gray smog, we don't have so much... Um, in areas where we're burning natural gas or petrol. It's more where we're burning coal still. So we're going to find gray smog where we're burning coal.